Hi there. Welcome back for another fun and educational science lesson. Okay, fun might be over the top, but hopefully it'll be educational. So today I'm going to wrap it up with the periodic trends. So the one trend we haven't talked about is chemical reactivity. So let's take a look. Okay, so chemical reactivity. It's how likely or how vigorously an in order to achieve or obtain a full shell, a, t a full valence shell, and some of them will tend to gain electrons to complete the shell. So the alkali metals or the metals in general will tend to remove or give away some of their electrons in order to get rid of the outermost shell because we know that the shell that's underneath the first, um, well, the core shell that is closest to the valence shell, that shell is already full. It already has all the electrons that it needs to complete it. So by losing the valence electrons that they have on their last shell, that shell disappears and they therefore obtain or have already a full complete shell underneath. So they tend to give away electrons. Now, is it easier to steal away this electron over here or this electron over here for an atom that passes by? Well, this electron is held much more closely to the nucleus, so this one is a little bit harder to steal. This one being further away because there are several layers or several orbitals between the nucleus and the valence electron, this one is easier to steal. So because of this, this one can take off more easily and that will make potassium in this example more reactive than its counterpart, lithium. Okay, so as we go down a column, a group or a family on the metal side, well, they tend, those atoms tend to be more reactive towards the bottom because their valence electrons are further away from the nucleus and they can leave more easily, making them more reactive. They're faster at getting rid of that or those electrons, depending on which family we're talking about. So that's for the metals. So they have a low ionization energy. It's easy to steal the electrons away. Now, for the halogens on the other side of the table, it's a little bit different. So these atoms need to gain one electron in order to complete their octet, right? So all of them need one extra electron. Now, now who's gonna have the easiest time gaining that electron? Is it Br, which has several energy levels between the nucleus and the last shell? Or is it fluorine that has only two energy levels between the nucleus and the outermost shell. Well, obviously fluorine, because the outermost shell is closer to the nucleus, will have an easier time attracting an electron. The nucleus has more power over what's passing by over here nearby, as opposed to Br. The electrons that are passing nearby that could be grabbed are so much further away, they're hard to grab, they're hard to add, to its last shell. So Br will not react as quickly and will not be as reactive as fluorine would be. Fluorine has a higher electronic negativity value, making it faster, more eager to gain that last electron. Now, this, as we go along a period, will vary. I'm giving you the two uh, most extreme examples. But let's take a look at an entire period and figure out how this will work. So here I have a periodic table. Remember that we only look at the A groups because they have a similar and more simple structure. The center part, the middle part over here, these we call transition metals, they don't quite work the same way. So we disregard them. We look at the basic cases. So I've put here a chart that corresponds to the group numbers as well as how many valence electrons that represent. So we have groups 1 to 8a and we know that group 1a has one valence electron, group 2a two valence electrons, group 3a three, three valence electrons, group 4 has four, five and so on and so forth until we get to group 8, so the noble gases, they have eight valence electrons, except for helium that only has two. That's the exception, but it still has a full octet. 
as we talked about before, it only has one shell. It can only fit two electrons, so it's still happy and stable with two valence electrons. But all the others have more than one shell, more than one energy level, and that last outermost shell contains eight electrons, and that's why we call it the octet rule. Okay, so looking at these over uh, or these over here, let's determine how many valence electrons they will lose or gain in order to become stable. So if I look at group 1A, so 1A has one valence electron, should it lose one or gain seven? Well, obviously, it's faster to lose one electron than to gain seven. Group two, it would either lose two or gain six to go up to eight. Again, it's faster to lose two than to gain six. Group three, three valence electrons. Either they lose three or gain five. So faster again, it's faster again to lose three, oops, than to gain five. We get to group four, so the carbon group. Remember, these groups don't have names. We call them after the first element at the top, so the carbon group, the nitrogen group, the oxygen group. So the carbon group, they have four valence electrons. They can either lose or gain, oops, having trouble here, or gain four, okay, because it's the same amount of work. But I had explained to you that they tend to gain more than they tend to lose for, or they'll share. Down the road, we'll talk about the type of bonds that elements can form based on their electronic configuration. Okay, so for now, they can gain or lose four. It's the same amount of work. 5A, five valence electrons. In their case, they either lose five or gain three. Well, obviously, it's easier to gain three. It's faster. Group six, six valence electrons, they can lose six or gain two, faster to gain two. And group seven, they need to gain one, right, in order to get eight. The last group does nothing. It's non-reactive. That's why we call them inert gases, as you remember. Okay, so now we've analyzed the entire period, and it doesn't matter which period you pick, it's all the same story because it's based on the number of valence electrons that these, atom have, these atoms have. Sorry. Okay, so who's going to work harder? An atom that needs to lose one or an atom to need, that needs to gain one? It's the same amount of work. So the halogens and the alkali metals will be as reactive. But then as compared to atoms that need to gain or lose two, well, these, because they need to lose or gain two, that takes a little bit longer. So these atoms will not be as reactive as those that need to gain or lose one. Same idea with those that need to gain or lose three. It takes so much longer to gain or lose three. So again, these will not be as reactive as those who need to gain or lose two or those who need to gain or lose one. And obviously, the ones that need to gain or lose four are the slowest because it's so much longer to either acquire or give away four electrons. So at the ends, notwithstanding the noble gases, we don't talk about those because they're stable. At the ends of the periodic table, these atoms will be super fast, super reactive. In the middle, much less so. And when I talk about the middle, again, I'm not talking about this here. I'm talking about group four. Okay, so group four, slow, a little less slow, a little faster, super fast. And if I go the other way, a little bit faster, again, a little bit faster, super fast. Okay, so if I illustrate this differently, well, this is what it would look like. In the middle, it has these elements, or I should have written it here, these elements have low chemical reactivity. As we go towards the end of the periodic table, these, the halogens, have a higher electronegative, uh, sorry, a higher chemical reactivity, the same way at this end, the atoms have a higher chemical reactivity in terms of a period. And then when we look at columns, groups, well, for the alkali metals, 
these at the bottom are more reactive because the atoms, uh, sorry, the valence electrons are further away from the nucleus. There are more shells, so it's easier for the atoms to leave. So these react faster amongst that group. And amongst this group, the ones near the top, because they have less shells, the nucleus is closer to the outermost shell, it'll have an easier time attracting the extra electron that it needs, making it more reactive. So at the top here, they're more reactive than at the bottom. So I hope this was clear. If you have questions, as usual, leave them in the comments section below, and it'll be my pleasure to help you out. All right, see you around.